It's the most expensive jet ski we have ever tested at Watercraft Zone. It's called the Balassi Burasca, and while it has an Italian name, Burasca is Italian for storm, the craft is handmade in Austria. When it went on sale in Europe in mid-2021, it was priced from 50,000 euros, the equivalent of about 56,000 US dollars, or about 82,000 Australian dollars. And while that is a power of money, and comfortably more than twice the price of the fastest jet skis from Sea-Doo, Yamaha and Kawasaki, it shares some technology and construction materials found in Formula One race cars, such as a dry sump oil management system to help the turbocharged three-cylinder engine handle high g-forces created by its razor-sharp handling, and the widespread use of carbon fibre to strengthen the structure, such as the cross brace in the engine compartment, as well as carbon fibre handlebars, a carbon fibre muffler housing, and a beautifully crafted carbon fibre air intake. Plus, there are carbon fibre accents above the quad exhaust tips and on each side of the top deck, as well as a genuine carbon fibre seat base and a genuine carbon fibre reverse bucket that on its own is a work of art. In this video, we will go through prices and features of the Balassi Burasca, as well as the pros and cons. We also ran V-Box numbers to test top speed and acceleration times. A reminder before we get started, this video is not sponsored content, so we can be honest about our likes and dislikes. This craft was a demonstrator model owned by the distributor of Balassi in Australia and New Zealand, and we tested it over two days in July. Let's hit the water. The Balassi Burasca is a jet ski like no other. It is hand built with race car style craftsmanship, but it is not just about performance. The Balassi Burasca went on sale in Australia in 2022 in the middle of the global pandemic, starting with an eye watering price of $86,990 due to unfavourable exchange rates and the exorbitant cost of international shipping at the time but the local distributor relaunched the Balassi Burasca in early 2023 after the world came out of lockdown. The price in Australia is now $66,990 ski only, not including trailer and registration. That's still more than twice the price of other high performance jet skis such as the Sea-Doo RX PX300, Yamaha GP1800R SVHO and the Kawasaki Ultra 310 series, all of which have similar or even a touch better performance for a lot less money but in the same way there are affordable performance cars that are as fast as a Ferrari, the Balassi Burasca is not only about top speed, it also delights the sensors in other ways. Each model is built by hand over 108 hours using more than 2,000 specially crafted parts. While there are lashings of carbon fibre throughout, the top deck and hull are made out of an infused fibreglass composite material to better handle high speeds in choppy conditions. The top deck, hull and hood cover are painted by hand, which means buyers can customise their ski for a price. The engine compartment is easy to access once the seat is removed and the top deck cover is raised after releasing two tabs. It's so gorgeous to look at, many owners will probably use it as a display piece when it's not on the water. Here are the stats. The Balassi Burasca is powered by a turbocharged 1602cc three-cylinder engine. And although that's eerily similar to the 1630cc capacity of the Sea-Doo Rotax engine, Balassi says this is its own unique design. To that point, the intake manifold is made from metal rather than plastic as it is on the Sea-Doo, and is attached on the other side of the engine compared to the Sea-Doo. The jet pump has an internal diameter of 161mm and 14 vanes. The turbocharger uses a Mitsubishi core, but the unit is custom made for Balassi to deliver zero turbo lag and instant responsiveness. The handcrafted carbon fibre parts are made in Germany by Seatex. The fuel tank is 64 litres or 16.9 US gallons in capacity. From bow to stern, the Balassi Burasca is similar in size to the Sea-Doo RX PX300 and Yamaha GP1800R SVHO, but despite all the carbon fibre, it is in fact a touch heavier than these rivals. The Balassi tips the scales at 367 kilograms or 809 pounds, whereas the Sea-Doo RX PX300 has a dry weight of 354 kilograms or 780 pounds, and the Yamaha GP1800R SVHO has a dry weight of 342 kilograms or 754 pounds. The weight listed for the Kawasaki Ultra 310 is much heavier than the Balassi, 
but that's with all fluids on board versus the dry weight figures for the other craft. A K and N air filter is attached to a carbon fiber air intake and the engine is fed oil via a gear driven six stage dry sump system feeding into a carbon fiber reservoir and heat extractor. The oil filter is located in a tight spot on the engine block near the dry sump but is still more easily accessible than the oil filter on most other jet skis. The water injected exhaust system flows into a carbon fiber muffler while the exhaust pipe then splits into two before exhaling via four exhaust tips, two per side. Although the three cylinder engine capacity might be similar to a Sea-Doo, Balassi says that's where the similarities end. And unlike a Sea-Doo, the Balassi does not have a carbon seal. And instead the drive shaft operates in the same way as Yamaha and Kawasaki jet skis via a bearing and two seals. From the rider's point of view, there are two digital display screens, one embedded into the carbon fiber handlebars and another more conventional screen at the front of the center console. The Balassi uses a GPS sensor to determine speed and the performance screen displays critical information such as oil pressure, manifold pressure, intake temperature, engine water temperature and exhaust water temperature. This is a great feature we hope Sea-Doo and Yamaha adopt for their future performance models. Some of the technology, however, is more fiddly than it needs to be. For example, while the trim can be adjusted at the press of a button on a Sea-Doo, Yamaha or Kawasaki, on the Balassi, you must press a button on the left handlebar, then toggle up and down in the menu on the digital screen, which is unnecessarily complicated. Other small annoyances, the handlebars are not height adjustable without resetting their position with tools, whereas rival skis can change the angle of their handlebars simply by lifting a tab. And the Balassi has no storage, not even for a phone, wallet or car keys. There is a small wet storage area under the rider's seat, but it's not very secure. Best to buy a life jacket with pockets if you plan on owning one of these skis. The riding position is not ideal at first, the front seat is too close to the center console and handlebars, so you end up straddling the middle of the seat between the upper and lower tiers. Those who prefer to ride while standing up may find the handlebars not quite high enough. Reboarding the rear deck requires patience and flexibility. Firstly, you need to make sure you don't step on the carbon fiber reverse bucket, and then you need to make sure you put your knees and hands on the strongest part of the rear deck, rather than grabbing onto one of the Balassi's design features. We found the carbon fiber key to be a bit stubborn to remove and refit, and of course you need it to let go if you and your lanyard come off at speed. But the fitting will likely loosen up with more regular use. The aluminium sponsons are very aggressive straight out of the box. Fortunately, they are adjustable and some riders may prefer to soften them off and reduce their bite in tight turns. That said, all is forgiven once you squeeze the throttle and realize the potential of the turbocharged power. In fact, the Balassi Burasca is quite literally fast from the get-go. Its idle speed is about eight kilometers an hour or five miles per hour, so you find yourself grabbing neutral as soon as you need a brake. The heavy hull and rearward engine layout tend to push the weight of the craft to the back, which naturally brings the nose up. But the deep V design, while not as aggressive as Sea-Doo's deep V bow, does a good job of carving through choppy conditions. The steering feels heavy at first, but this is because this is a heavy craft, and the sponsons instantly dig into the water as soon as you start to take a turn. However, the Balassi is still incredibly manoeuvrable, and the more time we spent on it, the more we felt at home. You could spend hours scrolling through all the performance displays, but we settled on the screen with all the critical technical information. After getting up to speed, it was time to do our acceleration tests and top speed runs using a V-Box GPS measuring device. We had to set our start speed at five kilometers an hour or three miles per hour rather than zero because the V-Box, which is primarily used to test performance cars, is triggered by even the slightest movement. Because we are launching on water, the craft moves around no matter how steady you are. In the mode we selected, the timer started the moment the speed tripped past five kilometers an hour or three miles per hour. Here are the results. As you can see, we couldn't quite match Balassi's top speed claim. We had a top speed of 118.9 kilometers an hour versus the claim of 125 kilometers per hour or 73.9 miles per hour versus the claim of 78 miles per hour. This compares to a 110 km an hour or 68 mile per hour top speed for the Yamaha GP1800R SVHO and a peak velocity of 125 km an hour or 78 miles per hour for the Sea-Doo RX PX300 RS. 
Balassi says the top speed of the Uburaska is in the range of 125 to 130 kilometers an hour, or 78 to 80 miles per hour, with half a tank of fuel and an 80 kilogram rider. For our test, we had a full tank of fuel and our rider weighed 70 kilograms. Although our test conditions were good, it wasn't glassed out like a river or a lake. Nevertheless, our numbers show that while the Balassi is among the fastest jet skis on sale today, rather than the outright fastest, it is worth noting there is much more to this watercraft than top speed. The craftsmanship is in another league, including the extensive use of real carbon fibre. And with just 140 examples sold worldwide so far, including about 10 in Australia to date, the Balassi comes with a level of exclusivity that is rare in the personal watercraft world. In the same way no one really needs a Ferrari, there are cheaper and faster alternatives to the Balassi Burasca. But there truly is nothing else like it on the water. And that probably suits buyers just fine. Because for now, the Balassi's price point keeps this personal watercraft in the league of the mega rich as a toy to go with their mega yachts. Go to watercraftzone.com.au to read the full review and get all the latest jet ski news. Please hit like if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to this channel so we can grow our jet ski community and to make sure you don't miss any future updates. Thanks for watching.